Hey everyone, welcome back to HQ in the Know with Adam So Fun. I'm Adam Ratliff, and I'm so fun. <laughs> it never gets old, right? <laughs> it's my new thing. Um, today we are talking Bob Intention. Um, top Tension will be another video. I still have to figure out how we're gonna do it because you have to see the top of the quilt and the bottom of the quilt and lots of camera angles. But um, we're gonna talk Bob Intention first. So I'm gonna come in and grab this bobbin. And we'll talk Bob Intention, pre-wounds, winding your own. There will be a video on how to wind your own bobbin, but um, let's just stick to tension. One thing at a time or these videos will be way too long. So um, we're using a pre-wound right now. This is a um, super bob. This is from Superior. It's a bottom line thread um, wrapped on a pre-wound on a bobbin for us. Now um, there's a lot of different pre-wound out there. As long as you get a pre-wound that is the M size for a long arm, so we want M size bobbins, you can use pre-wounds. Um, super bobs, I know there's some in here. Let me see. I can't get my fingers. If you've seen other videos, fat fingers. So a super bob is gonna have a cardboard piece on both sides, so it's the thread is wrapped on a kind of a cardboard bobbin, so you just toss what's left at the end of it, or you can recycle it. Um, but that's a super bob. Bottom line thread, 60 weight. Um, there are deco bobs, and they're wrapped on a plastic bobbin. There are magna glides, which is um, glide thread that has, um, it look, it's gonna be wrapped like this. There's nothing on the outside, and there's a little magnet, so it helps hold it in the bobbin case. If you do use those, please don't take your tension spring out. There's a little spring inside your bobbin. That needs to stay there. You can still use it with your magna glides. I've used it with mine. It's not gonna mess up, but a lot of people are like, oh, you have to take that out. Don't take it out. It's hard. It's it's not hard to get back in, but it's hard to get back in correctly, um, especially if, you, if you're not sure what you're doing. So we wanna use M size bobbins, and we have our bobbin case. I'm doing everything over, um, usually I do it over my quilt, but I gotta turn out, you gotta turn out to the camera, something I learned in theater. <laughs> Um, but we have our bobbin. Um, there are two handy quilter bobbins out there. They're both fine. Depends on when you bought it, where you got it. But here's our bobbin. We have our bobbin screwdriver because on all your bobbins, we're gonna have a little tension spring. We'll come in close so you can kind of see all the stuff that we're talking about. Um, but there's a tension spring. There are two little screws, and when we tighten or loosen the tension on these bobbins, we're always adjusting the larger one. And when we adjust it, it's little tiny, little tiny turns. Like I always say you can feel it, you can't see it. Um, so that's a little bit about our bobbin. We do have the latch in the front. Make sure when you're putting your bobbin in, you're not holding this latch out, because if you are, then your bobbin's not getting locked into place. And when you put your bobbin in, I'm just gonna pop this here, even though it's not threaded right, and, when you put it in, you wanna hear the click. If you don't hear the click, take it out, put it back in, make sure you're putting it in correctly um, because you always wanna hear that click. I get my bobbin. All right, so bobbins. If you are a bobbin winder, I'm a bobbin winder. I love winding my own bobbins because I love thread and I have a lot of thread. So I can always find the right color that I need. So if you are getting bobbins, please, this is one of the places you can't cut a corner. Purchase handy quilter bobbins. They are made specifically to go in our machines out of a specific material. There's a lot of long arms out there and all the bobbins are a little bit different. Please purchase handy quilter bobbins. Um, I have silver bobbins and I have purple bobbins. You can buy purple bobbins in a whole bobbin box. So it looks like this, but it's a whole box of purple bobbins. Um, I use two types of thread in my bobbin. I use uh, so, or so fine and I use bottom line. And I have the two colors because I know silver is so fine and purple is bottom line. Um, just please don't skimp on trying to save some money on your bobbin. Um, you don't want to ruin your machine because you saved a few dollars. And you can really tell um, the kind of aftermarket bobbins aren't the same size, they're a little thicker, they don't really fit great in the machines. There's all re there's reasons. So this is one of the places, like I said, you can't cut corners. You need to get the correct bobbin and you need to buy the correct needles. So 
Those are the only rules I have, I think. If I think of more, I'll let you know. Oh, you have to go slow when you're using rulers and you have to have a ruler base. But that's in the ruler video, right? So let's talk about tension. Our machines are tensioned off of our bobbins. As long as we know the bobbin tension is correct, then anything else is just gonna be done up top with our tension knob. So it's very important that we get these bobbins tensioned. So idea, the, the rule of thumb is one, the bobbin is gonna go in and we wanna make a nine. So here's your nine. So the circle and then the threads coming off on the right. So there's our nine and we're gonna stick it into the bobbin case. We'll thread it back up through our little guide under our spring and now our bobbin is threaded. So we wanna be able to hold the bobbin in our hand. I'm gonna pull 12 inches or so. I don't wanna to try to check this with just an inch. Give yourself some slack, okay? So it's in my hand, hold some out. You want the bobbin to stand up in your hand. Looks good. You also want it to fall. That fell really fast. Probably a little too fast, so I'm gonna tighten it. Now this is very subjective. The bobbin drop is very subjective and everybody's drop's gonna be a little bit different. So um, you'll get used to it, you'll, you'll get your drop the way you like it, and as long as it's always dropping like that for you, then you shouldn't have much issues if you're using the same type of thread up top. Let me check it again, I'm tightening it up a little bit more. Oh, I like that drop, that looks nice to me. Um, so now I would put my bobbin in, and then as I change thread up top, it's all just tensioning with my tension dial. Now there is a little gadget out there to help us with our bobbin tension. And um, I didn't use it when I first got my machine. I had my machine for two years before I started using it and it has changed my life. It's like, I am now a preacher of the Toa gauge, but um, this is the Toa gauge. There's two out there. This is the, there's an electronic one and then this one. This is the one I have, it's fine. But what it does is it gives a numerical value to how tight that tension on that bobbin is. So it's kind of taking the drop test guessing game out of everything because we're gonna get a number. So I stick my bobbin in and just like if it were in the machine, you wanna hear the click. It's gonna click in just like if it were in the machine. Um, I'm gonna thread through my dials, come back, and as I pull, it's giving me a number. I have no clue what that number is because it's facing towards you, so let me see. And this is about 160. That's, um, this is Omni-Thread. I know it because I roll, I filled this bobbin, and um, I know the Omni-Thread per the Superior website. They have an education section. You can go there and um, get a ton of thread material. Um, they want it to be about 180 to 200, I believe. So I tightened it and I'll go a little bit farther. Remember, I can feel it, I can't see it. And you'll see I'm pulling a lot of thread off of this bobbin. I don't worry about that, it's just thread. So now we're about 190. So if I come back, there's 190, and I know this bobbin is tensioned the way I like it. So now, if I put, if I were to use this, look at all this thread. Um, ooh. If I tension all my bobbins like this, and I always use Omni Thread in my bobbin, I know all the adjustments are up there. This is always correct. I know it's always correct because I've used my gauge and I've gauged it. Um, one of the other awesome things about the TOA gauge is that if you do wind your own bobbins, you can overwind it. You can put too much thread on that bobbin and it actually splits and makes the bobbin bow out a little bit. Um, I know you can do it because I've done it. So I did the drop test and the drop test was perfect and I stuck it in my tension, or my TOA gauge, because I wanted to check it, and I couldn't pull any thread off of it because that bobbin was blown out. So I stuck it in my bobbin, um, checked it again, I couldn't get it to pull out, I drop test, I didn't know what was going on, and then I ended up laying it next to another bobbin and found out it was almost an eighth of an inch bigger than what it should have been. So um, I tossed that bobbin because it wasn't gonna be able to get fixed. So um, the TOA gauge, showed me that that bobbin was messed up. So there's there's other th kind of benefits that come with the TOA gauge. Um, they can order it for you. We have them at Stitch House, call them, they'll send it to you. But um, it really does help with tension, especially if you're having tension problems. It's taking the guesswork out of one of those places that you could be having that issue. So um, 
I'm gonna bring you in close so you can kind of see the Toa up close and we'll see you back here in a second. All right, so here's our Toa gauge up close so you can kind of see everything. We have the um, gate or we have what it's called and all our little numbers. I don't know what all that stuff means. I just know that it tells me when I hit 200. Um, here's our bobbin. Again, I told you we'd come up close. Here's the latch. Our bobbin spring is this piece here. And then we have our two screws and we're only adjusting the top one. Inside, you can see the spring in there and um, we don't want to take it out. If you drop your bobbin, it might pop out and then you get to put it in. And you, when you put it in, you want to make sure that nothing is over, overlapping this kind of cutout. So I'm going to put my bobbin in. Here's my nine. I've made my nine. And this again is a super bob. We can tell because it has the cardboard. So there's my nine. I'm going to put my bobbin into my bobbin case, slide up through the slit on the side and click it in. Now I'm in my spring. So this is a different type of thread, a different type of bobbin. So I'm probably going to need to adjust some. So I'm going to stick it into my toa, click it in, thread it through my dials and look how tight that is compared to where I was. I was at 190. So I'm going to get my screwdriver. I don't know where I put my screwdriver. I found it. What's gr another great thing about the toa is I have access to that screw right here on the side. Can we see? So I'm going to loosen this up. And this is going to be more than just a tad because it was really tight. So I can screw it and loosen it up a little bit. So that is reading about 150. Now we're here in Dallas and Dallas tends to be a little bit wet. And these do have cardboard pieces. Oops. So I can peel this cardboard off. So I'm gonna peel the part cardboard off the side that's rubbing up against those springs. And I'm gonna put it back in here to see if that might change it a little bit because that cardboard can get bent a little bit too. So, but you can, you can take that cardboard off because sometimes because there's so much moisture in the air, the, um, the cardboard expands. So there we are and I'm going to tighten it up. So that brought it down about 20 and I go a little bit tighter. Too tight. And there we are, we're about 180, 190, and that is perfect. So, there is a little cutter right there. If you just pull it down, it will cut your thread. So now I know this bobbin is correct. I do check my tension every bobbin. If I fill up, oops, if I fill up 10 bobbins, every bobbin I'm gonna check. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're a little bit different. I just use my adjustments. Remember, it's not a domestic machine. We are allowed to make adjustments on our tension. All right, so thanks for joining us. We talked about bobbin tension. Feel free to do the drop test. I just believe in the TOA because it has taken that guessing game out of my life. Um, call the shop. TOA is weird. They don't sell wholesale, so you, you get what you get with the, with the payment. Some shops carry them, some shops don't, just because of that. But um, check them out. It's, it really did kind of change my thinking about tension because I know everything is now just my black knob up at the top. Although it's not really a black knob because I have the infinity and I can just push a button. One other thing about Toa. So this is the M size. There are different sizes. The M size Toa goes for long arms. There is an L size. If you have a machine that uses an L size bobbin, then um, you can use the Toa with your L size bobbin. As long as it's, you know, it's a bobbin case that you can click into the to this. But you have an L size and you have an M size. So make sure you're buying that correct size. Um, as always, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow Stitch House on Facebook and Instagram. Go follow me, Adam So Fun, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and that's S E W. Um, you know, we're all out here and we're all trying to make sure you're learning something all the time. So Happy whatever day it is. I think Wednesday. I hope you liked my um, flamingo shirt. I had to do something fun when I talked about tension because it is such a pain sometimes. And we'll see you all in the next video.